Hey, hey, what is going on everyone? My name is Julian Ostrovska from julianostrovska.com and today I have a super special guest with me today, uh, Rachel Stewart, the author of the new, uh, newly published book, Unqualified Success, which I'm super excited to dive into personally that I just received yesterday. So, um, yeah, super excited to have Rachel on today. So, um, you know, welcome, Rachel, good to see you here. Thank you, thank you for having me. Can you, uh, first of all, dive a little bit into your story? How did you get started in business? You know, how did you find out about, you know, what was your initial path um, that, you, that you got on? Yeah, so I definitely consider myself an unqualified success. Um, in my current position that I've, I've had, that I'm, I've been with the company for about 11 years. And prior to that, I was a stay-at-home mom and I was dabbling on the side in graphic design. And then we hit the recession of 2008 and um, it was a really hard time for my family. Uh, my husband got laid off, uh, you know, we were upside down in our house. And so that was kind of my move to get back into the working world. And uh, so I got a job with a restoration company as a bookkeeper and was fairly unqualified for that position, but uh, they went ahead and uh, took a chance on me. And then I just had the opportunity to learn and to grow and to figure things out as uh, I went along and was just really hungry to keep learning and to keep trying and, and to um, progress. So. I just kind of moved up as the company grew. At the time, we were probably, um, you know, we had three employees when I was hired, and we were doing about one and a half million in set in revenue. And now I'm the the general manager and moving into the executive vice president role, and we have over 50 employees and uh, probably uh, do 22 million in revenue this year. And so it's just been. Uh, a stepping stone of learning as you go and just being a big advocate for um, having grit and determination and dealing with failure and overcoming fear and taking taking chances when the opportunity arises. Um, in addition to that, um, me and the owner of the company along with some other partners, we started a software company for restoration contractors and so that's a little bit about my story. Wow! Wow, that's quite a lot. That's quite a lot. So, what brought you to actually writing a book and you know getting published and you know kind of more into the personal development space? Yeah. So, I just felt like I had learned some things along the way that I wish I had access to earlier, and um, and when I started my journey, like podcasts weren't really a thing. Um, you know that there were a lot of books out there and stuff like that which I try I had to consume but I just wish that there were more people that were talking about the fact that everyone is unqualified and no matter what level like I always kept feeling like if I got to a certain level then that feeling would go away and the truth is is that anyone who's on a trajectory of growth is unqualified for that next step and it doesn't matter what aspect you are in your life. I've talked to very, very successful entrepreneurs and CEOs and stuff, and they, you know, they talk about imposter syndrome or, you know, some of these other things. And it happens to everybody because if you're growing, if you're trying to improve yourself, if you're, um, you don't know today what you need to know for tomorrow, and that's okay. It's about getting in and doing the work anyway. You know, I like what you said. Um, you know, I do like the title of the book in general, Unqualified Success. It really got me curious when I first got an email about it. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. You know, the you know interesting title. And, you know, I kind of started digging in, into the book a little bit. And, um, you know, you mentioned imposter syndrome. And I feel like as entrepreneurs, that's, you know, with my audience, especially, you know, like I have a lot of people who are course creators or affiliate marketers or, you know, network marketers. And all of the times they come online. And one of the things that I'm also teaching is content creation. And one thing that, you know, my clients always ask me, they say, I don't feel like I'm qualified enough to teach. I don't feel like I'm, you know, good enough or I don't have enough knowledge or, you know, like you said, imposter syndrome. How do you think, like in your opinion, how can people really overcome that? Um, so 
I think it's first understanding that that is a thing for everybody and that that's something that's always going to probably be with them a little bit. And so that if they go into it knowing that, then that I think settles a lot of that anxiety. And then I do think that there's a lot of steps that you can take. There's exercises that you can do to start with your mindset. And, um, you know, in one of my chapters, I talk about um, one of my good friends who she she wanted to be a counselor and so she went to school to become a counselor and then once she did that then she's like I'm still unqualified and so then she went and she got, continued to get degrees and degrees and degrees and never actually started practicing her work because she always felt like well I'm not ready yet I need more knowledge I need more something before I can get going and the truth is that no amount of degrees or accomplishments or certificates is going to make you feel qualified you have to start with a mindset first that you know that you can do this and that you are qualified and that you can do your work in the world and you have something of value to add and when you start from that perspective and dive in then you start seeing the results that are going to help you rather than waiting for enough qualifications that's going to suddenly make you feel ready because I think it's more about experience and doing it that's gonna give those that, that feeling yeah yeah totally because a lot of the times you know somebody starts in business whether that's you know even a job or you know any kind of company and then it's it's just lack of doing you know they get started they're like oh I don't know if I can do this and then you know we just sit there and procrastinate for you know, weeks, months, sometimes years without actually doing anything. So yeah, I like that you said that, you know, you actually have to take action, put your mindset to work and, you know, it's better, you know, to be, you know, better done than, than perfect. <laughs> right. Absolutely. And that's the thing is it's not going to be perfect and it's failing forward. You know, it's, it's learning to deal with that and fear is going to be along for the ride. There's a chapter in there about fear and how to combat that fear. And if you are always starting a new thing, knowing that fear is going to be there and it's along for the ride, but it doesn't get to take the driver's seat. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, one thing that you also talk about in the book and you also just mentioned that right now is failure. So I feel like as entrepreneurs, that's always one of the things that we go through multiple times. And that's one of the things a lot of the times I feel like people even are afraid to get started in business in the first place is that fear of failure. And, you know, there's like um, a, a book, uh, Fail Forward by John C. Maxwell. And you also talk about it that you have to, you know, failure is basically the road to success. Can you touch on that a little bit? Yes. So I was actually listening to a podcast the other day and I do talk about this in my book, but um, it was talking about somebody who um, was in the um, uh, comedy space and so, but they wanted to get into um, some writing, the com comedy writing and some screenplays and stuff like that. So they um, put together a list of, they wanted a hundred rejections. And when they approached it from that way, then they didn't have such a fear of getting out there and being rejected because they were searching for a hundred rejections. And in that hundred rejections, they also got 42 yeses. So they did hit their hundred rejections, but they also, and so that's a really great close ratio. And um, so when you approach failure as not something that says something about you or your work or your worth, but as just um, one of the steps that you have to go through in order to achieve success, then it's a total, it doesn't mean something to your worth. And it doesn't have anything to do with the value that you're adding to the world. It's just a part of the process. And when you can kind of approach it that way, um, it, it definitely helps deal with some of the, that, that failure that will inevitably happen to all of us. Oh yeah, exactly. I feel like it's also just, you know, you know, expecting that it's going to happen, you know, like, um, or like uh, Thomas Edison, he had to, you know, try a million times before, you know, the, the light bulb actually worked, <laughs> right? So, and it's so funny, sometimes people say, oh, I've tried this once and it didn't work. And you, yeah, I usually tell them you have to try at least a hundred times until you figure out if it's going to work or not. Absolutely. And Sarah Blakely, like she talks about, she grew up in a family, like where her dad asked every day, so what did you fail at today? And like, that was a big thing is they were, they 
wanted to be able to share all of the ways that they failed and to take away the shame of failure and just be able to talk about it in a way that is actually something that we seek and we try because you know that that again takes away the fear and the shame of getting out there and putting yourself out there and when you put yourself out there there's going to be rejection for sure oh yeah definitely and you know one chapter that you also have is uh, showing up so which is I feel like it's such an important aspect of um, you know success in general, whether you know you're qualified or unqualified for it. Which most of the times we are unqualified for that. So, what what do you think? Um, like, can you touch on that a little bit as far as you know showing up? Because you know I've always heard that you know 80% of the success is just you showing up in front of your audience, whether that's going to be you know like publishing a book, doing a podcast, creating I don't know an article, doing a video or an interview like this. What's what's your take on that? Yeah, so I mean that that chapter is really about hard work, and but the biggest piece of that is showing up. And I don't know if any of you have started um, a, a health regimen or any like the hardest thing is getting to the gym. Once you get to the gym, it's fine, but it's just actually you know getting that alarm set, getting out of bed dragging yourself to the gym and once you're there you're like why is this a big deal it's not um, so that's that's part of it and that's how we deal with it in, in our work and in our businesses it's showing up with the energy that we need to you know motivate our teams or to motivate it's even harder when it's just you as a solo entrepreneur and showing up for yourself every day with the kind of passion and drive that that you need um, but I always think that work can overcome talent any day. So like those people who are willing to just work hard will outpace and outperform those that are just naturally intrinsically talented. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. You know, there, there's a quote saying that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work that well. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's the truth. You know, there, there's one thing that you said about, um, you know, obviously going to the gym and one thing, like I have a lot of listeners that are solopreneurs that, you know, it's, I feel like it's a blessing and a curse in its own uh, that when you are your own boss, you know, like I always give a, the analogy to people when you are at school, you have your parents telling you like, hey, you have to clean your room. When you go to, you know, university, like you, you know, your, um, your professor tells you to pass the exam or, you know, give your homework or you're just not gonna you know make it right when you have a boss at a job then generally he tells you to show up at work otherwise you're gonna be fired but when you are your own boss that's when the problems come in you you know feel happy that I don't have anybody telling me what to do but then you have to be you know self uh, like self-reliant how do you feel how do you think um, like from your perspective how can people really push themselves to either, either go to the gym or get to work on their business? Is there like a mindset shift or some mindset work they need to do or what is it? Yeah, well, I think obviously that comes back to radical personal accountability, um, but that that's something I think that can be, be developed over time. And so if you can't start that place where um, you can make a promise or a commitment to yourself that I'm gonna have this project done by this date and give yourself deadlines and make sure that no matter what happens what other things come your way that you can meet those commitments if that's not where you're starting from I'm always like start where you're at you know so if you're somebody that struggles with doing those or as entrepreneurs you have like a, you know like the next shiny penny uh, syndrome and you're always looking at the next thing rather than working on where it's hard um, then I think it's really helpful to have a, like either a mastermind group or surround yourself with people that can help hold you accountable or get a coach or um, somebody that you're working on your development with and also kind of reporting that accountability to um, I think that that can be really really helpful yeah, that's what I feel like as well, because when we first get started and, you know, from my experience as well, I got started in, um, you know, in marketing and I was all by myself, right? So I didn't really have anybody, didn't know anybody online, got to, you know, Facebook, social media, all those places. And then one thing that really helped me as well was, you know, having an accountability partner and, you know, at this point as well, a mastermind group 
where you know we can feed off of different ideas and feed off of each other and i feel like yeah i mean if you're just by yourself it's gonna take you so much time to figure this out on your own you know instead it's you know i always say internet has all the answers it has all the answers it has all the people everything is out there you just have to go and ask and i feel like a lot of the times people have that you know um issue of asking because when you ask for help it makes you feel vulnerable and a lot of people don't just they just don't want to feel that way right right and i think there's so much value in, in being able to glean information from other people and you don't have to reinvent the wheel or relearn things so there's that piece of it where you can bounce ideas off of and then there's the accountability thing i would also say that uh, i have a chapter in in the book about vision and i think that that's a really really good place to start because if you can create a very um rich sensory rich vision that you can be playing in your mind all the time and what's going to happen is that your mind goes to work when you're not at work so if you're you know playing with the kids or taking your dog for a walk or something like that but you've been playing that vision of where you want to be in your head then it's going to start trying to solve that problem subconsciously and then you will get really um you know, in, innovative ideas that come out of the blue, you know, when you're not working, when you're cooking dinner, when you're doing something else and you're like, oh, I should really try that in my business. And that's your brain trying to make that vision that you put in place come, come about. And I think that that can be really helpful as well. Yeah, yeah, I feel like, you know, one of the questions that I always get is how do you stay consistent? Because we all know consistency is the name of the game, whether that's, you know, content creation or, um, you know, even going to the gym. I mean, if you're not consistent with that, then you're not going to lose weight. If you are, you know, consistent with eating burgers, then obviously, you know, your consistency <laughs> is going to give you different results. And, you know, one thing that I also think, like I'm looking at my wall right now and I have a vision board right there. Like, what's your uh, take on that? Because a lot of the times, you know, as entrepreneurs, we, you know, either, you know, like I've heard different kinds of teachings as well over the years. And sometimes people say, you know, like you can't just hold it in your mind, you know, like sometimes you can, but you either need to write it down or have like, I don't know, like a, uh, something on your phone, like a wallpaper or something on your computer or like a Pinterest board or a vision board. Do you find that this, you know, when you have that like visual in front of you, that that also helps you out? Yeah, so I think that, that both of those steps, like I think you need to write it out because you need to have it really well defined and have all of that um, sensory imagery in that writing. And from there, it helps you be more consistent about where, because sometimes your mind will just, like one day it will be thinking about, oh, you want it to look like this, and another day it will look something different, and everything like that. And I, so I think writing it out and reading it lots of times um, at first, and so your mind has a very, very clear and defined picture about specifically where it's going and what that looks like, what that smells like, what that feels like. Um, and then from there, being able to shift that into um, something that you don't have to read, that it's just, you know, when you, when you go to that place and you think about it, your mind automatically conjures up what exactly that experience is like for you. Mm -hmm. and, and so, um, you know, we, we did that with our company this year. Um, so I kind of always had done it for me personally, but never had kind of transferred that into something where the company was doing it and, and we were doing it as a team. And it has been remarkable the amount of success that we've seen and everybody coming together to get to the same place, rowing in the same direction. So if anybody's dealing with a team, it's really helpful that way as well. And I feel like it also kind of gives you the direction that you are going to because, you know, I've experienced this uh, a couple of years ago. I remember when I was publishing content and I was doing so many different things and I was keeping busy, but then I was like, where am I actually going? And, you know, it's funny, like I was, I was talking with a friend the other day and uh, we were talking about, you know, like this exact subject, subject. And, you know, I told her, like, I was like, if you're going, like if you get into a car and you don't have GPS and you don't know where you're going, where you're going, you're going to end up nowhere. So I feel like it's the same thing, you know, that applies to business. Absolutely. And, you know, we learned it as a kid in Alice in Wonderland, you know, like when Alice gets there and the, the Cheshire cat asks, you know, 
she says, which road should I take? And the cat says, well, it depends on where you want to go. And so, you know, it really, we can't navigate if we don't have a clear destination of where we're going, just like you said. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's one thing that I like that you mentioned in the book. Um, you know, as entrepreneurs, we get started and then, you know, we don't necessarily, like obviously we never really get exposed to the fact that we have to work on our mindset or personal development. I mean, I found out about personal development, I think one year after I was in business in the first place, I was like, oh, there's books. So I was like so surprised when I found out about that. And you know, one thing that people always say, they, you know, they say, oh, I'm going to take action and then I'm going to feel good about myself. They say, I'm going to, you know, uh, go to the gym and I'm going to feel good about how, you know, how I feel like, you know, about how, you know, like, like my muscles are sore and all of that. And, you know, you talk about a slightly different concept that the feeling comes first and then the action. Yeah, so it, it's, this is tricky, right? Because a lot of people will say, well, how can I feel like this is true if it's not a reality yet? So like you gave an example of the gym. So how can I feel good about my body when I'm not happy with what my body looks like or what my body does or anything like that? But the reality is, is you're never going to feel good about your results until you start with their mindset. And you're not, not probably likely to be able to be consistent when you're operating from a negative place. So if you're operating from, you know, I hate my, I'm disgusting, my, you know, I hate the way that I look or whatever, then that's not gonna be a motivating thing to take care of this body. But if you are operating from a place where my body does amazing things and, you know, all, and you come from a place of all of the wonderful things that it does for you, that it, you know, you can walk and you can run and you can do some of these things and the way that your body has, has let you experience life, you know, like when you go outside and you can feel the wind or you can see and experience things and you kind of come from a place where you're, where you feel positive, then positive results can happen from it. And so then you're motivated to get more out of it. So you're like, I wonder, wonder how strong I could do, I could be. Like, could I do one pull-up? Could I do two pull-ups, you know? And you're pushing yourself from a place where you feel positive about yourself. And, and I think like, even as a leader, as an entrepreneur, if you're operating from a place where like, I'm really talented at what I'm offering to the world and the world needs this, or I'm a great leader. And then your actions, your mind likes to be right. And so your mind will find things that prove you right. And then your actions will start taking that path. And so you'll start being the leader that you, your mind believes that you are. And you'll start being the entrepreneur that you, your mind believes you are. So I think it's important to start with the belief first and then the actions and, and results come later. Yeah, definitely. Because, you know, like you, you started talking about, you know, the things that we usually tell ourselves. We, we say, oh, like my body doesn't look the way I want it to look. It also comes with that like negative self-talk. It doesn't help nobody, right? So you keep <laughs> saying all those things and then what happens is it just becomes your reality and then you can't get yourself out of that cycle. And then, yeah, I feel like it also has to be like, you have to always come from a place of gratitude and be grateful for, you know, the body that you have and where you're going with that. Uh, if you know we keep talking about the gym gym analogy then um yeah i kind of feel like you know if we keep saying to ourselves the negative stuff and then we just focus more on that and that's what we attract yep absolutely absolutely so yes. thank you so much rachel that's been amazing you've shared a lot of good stuff with uh with my audience um you know really really hope that you guys get to pick up the book unqualified success uh, I'm gonna attach the link down below. I do want to ask you one question that I generally ask on every single interview. So, if you were to get started all over again in business, you know, any kind of endeavor, uh, knowing what you know right now, what would you do differently? Um, so, I think that the biggest thing that you can do is on yourself. So, um, in after because. I believe that so so much that after every chapter in the book I put exercises 
So it's not just a concept that you're listening to or learning or reading, but that then you can put it into practice and to start practicing the habits that are going to produce the results. Um, so I would definitely, say, like you said, you know, you got into it a year before you were like, oh, I really need to start working on some of these things about me rather than just about my business. And I would say that that would be the number one thing I would, I would, if I could go back, I would start there. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I totally agree with that. So is there any place where people can connect with you? Is there a website where they can go or what's the best place for people to reach out to you? Yeah, so I'm on, on the web, Unqualified Tools. So uh, T-O-O-L-S. So again, I say, you know, it's not just theory, but there's real tools for people to use and implement. Um, you can find me on, on social media as well, on Unqualified Success. All right. Thank you very much, Rachel. Really, really appreciate, appreciate that. Thanks so much for, for uh, coming on. I don't want to take too much of your time. Um, so uh, thanks so much again for all of your input. Uh, amazing, amazing stuff. And uh, yeah, can't wait to, uh, for people to get, to get their hands on your book. Thank you so much.